Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Magic the Gathering cheating and why it just seems to happen all the time. I just don't understand it. But the finals came down to two known cheaters. Again, so I'm going to talk in more detail about Paula Victor Dama de Rosa, who ended up winning. But the person he beat in the finals was Marcellus Carvajo. And let me read you some of the things that he's been caught. Um, he, in 2009, Wizard of the Coast uh, announced that uh, 0221 2009 player disqualified without prize. I'll click on the link and read you the article. Uh, maybe it has since been deleted. Yep, looks like uh, they're deleting these articles from these cheaters. Um, and then in 2014, he was disqualified. Uh, December 5th, 2015, he was disqualified at the World Magic Cup. Marcellus Carvajal has been disqualified from 2014 World Magic Cup for intentionally presenting an illegal deck, very much like um, Sohei, right? After evaluating the specifics of this case and given the unique nature of the World Magic Cup, a determination was made that this will not affect the rest of Team Portugal. The remaining three players will be allowed to continue the tournament and disqualification will not affect their standings. So Patrick Shapin then wrote an article about cheating at the Magic World Championship for uh, Star City Games. So this was only in 2014. The article has been moved to select, um, and he says, I was cheated against in my very first pro tour, Free Important Facts. In those days, you weren't allowed to play with sleeves, and so on and on. It's just like, I don't know, it's a lot of... Finally, we get to, um, from the official Wizard of the Coast page, of course, it's not that simple. After the match had begun, a member of Team Israel noticed a card hidden or forgotten as Marcellus claims. The card was Hornet Queen, a card that was not only the best card in the matchup, but an ideal card to remove from your deck at the start of the match. You don't want it in your opening hand. This is perfect. Is the perfect top deck later when you need it. Marcellus immediately called a judge on himself and received a loss for presenting an illegal deck. He claimed that the card had been exiled from Whip of Erebos and that was an honest mistake. Team Israel's captain Shahar Sanhar tried to escalate the situation, making sure the judges were aware of exactly just how convenient the situation this was and potential for abuse. While the judges recognized how bad the situation looked, the loss meant that Team Israel won the match, so judging staff decided to do a little bit more investigation. In the course of their investigation, they were reminded by Paul Richel, who was on site but not watching Marcellus' match, of two allegations against Marcellus at Pro Tour Amsterdam in 2010. These allegations were not from matches involving Rachel, but he was aware of them and wanted to make sure judges knew that this was relevant information from the event that was related to the exact cheat. At Pro Term Amsterdam 2010, Tarn Martel alleged that Marcellus Carverho drew off his cyborg during a Pro Tour match, which is what he's doing here. At the same event, Matt Sperling made the same allegation against Marcellio. Marcellio. An investigation followed but they weren't able to prove anything um so he was never banned the most damning he literally pile shuffled his deck yes it's possible to pile shuffle a deck and not realize it's a cart short without question the pressure to pay attention to other matches here's the thing though we're all we are always already being asked to accept a very unlikely scenario that looks as looks bad as being a fluke what percentage of games does a 10 plus year veteran like Marcellus forget to shuffle all of his cards in his deck? And that's the issue I have with if this guy, if Paula Victor da Marosa is the best Magic player, and he is by terms of how much money he's won, what are the chances that he makes this mistake? 
what are the chances that this mistake gets caught on camera? It's so smooth that the opponent who is a very good magic player doesn't catch it. No one catches this immediately. So in my opinion, you know, I mean, the Mythic Championship was a cheater versus a cheater. And of course, the cheater won. Then the question is, how did they get there? So everyone just forgot that this dude has cheated as recently as Throne of the Eldarin, which was one set ago. We're not talking about someone cheating like a long, long time ago. We're talking about one set ago. He was already he was cheating. And the dude that he played in the finals was also a cheater. Um, obviously, like, it's so insane to me that, and that's why MTG Arena is going to be great. And you might think, oh, he did MTG Arena. I, you know, I, when you have such a small field, like, the funny part is MTG Arena should allow you to open up a huge field, should it not? Like, everyone can log in at some time and play online, just like League of Legends in terms of, you know, climbing the tiers and so on. And then you can invite the best players. And that's what League of Legends teams do. They invite the people with the solo queue of the highest win percentage because then, you know, maybe they're good. Maybe they work in the team. Maybe they don't. But Magic the Gathering, it's like the reverse. They just picked a bunch of random people. And I've made videos about this before where they picked, they actually picked a Magic the Gathering employee with an ELO of below 1400, which if you know ELO, that's really bad. Um, hello? Like, literally half of everyone has an ELO over 1500. Or about, like, assuming, I mean, it depends on how you do the math, right? If you assume no one plays Magic, or no one plays GPs, but even, okay, so out of all the people who have ever played a professional Magic match, this dude's ELO is so low that he's just in the bottom 10% of Magic players. Uh, but you know what? He's an employee. Why not give him a bonus? And get, what, what if he ended up winning the thing? It's my crazy thing. I guess they really thought he was such a bad Magic player that there would be no chance he could win the event. I mean, imagine a Magic employee. It would be like a lottery worker winning the lottery. You would be like, hmm, that doesn't sound right. So anyway, this is a cheat. I caught him. No one cares. Boo-hoo. But he will cheat again, and I will catch him again. The good thing about cheaters like Marcellius Carvajal, even though they, ran, they made that article about him, I mean, he, he's, he cheated, okay? He got caught, and then he cheated some more. Sounds about right. I mean, this sounds about the... Uh... So in terms of Magic Gathering, everyone's cheating, it's almost like the Houston Astros. So a lot of you know I live in Houston. I used to love the Astros when they were a really bad team because I could do my work. I could go to a game, pay five bucks, do my work, and it would be great. They had Wi-Fi. Uh, hot dogs were like two $1 hot dog days. So it was great. It would be a good way to spend the afternoon with my team while getting stuff done because there's so many empty seats. Once the Astros started winning, I knew something was wrong. Now, of course, I couldn't imagine like they were uh, banning trash cans or banging on trash cans or having buzzers and not, whatnot. But one of my auto dealerships that I do marketing for is uh, a Cadillac dealership. And we signed Carlos Correa before he became really. And basically, we signed him by just giving him an Escalade to his mom and an Escalade to him. And so that was a really good contract. So then I started following baseball more. And Carlos Correa is a really good baseball player, obviously. But they started winning. And I remember um, we had a dude called Mattress Mac. And if the Astros won, every year he has this promotion. If the Astros won, win, then I will give your furniture, you know, for free. Um, it, he makes a lot of money doing that. My point is, like, you know what cheating looks like. You know when people get caught cheating, they just um, don't admit that they were cheating. Um, just similar to the Astros, you see their expressions, you see how, oh, it's us against them, we just want to play ball, we just want to play magic. A lot of the things that 
Paula and Marcellus have done in their whole careers, and they've had very lengthy careers. Um, Paulo being the number one earner in Magic the Gathering for prizes. And based on their behavior, based on, you know, the hand motions and car, you don't do that as a Magic Pro unless you want to distract your opponent. And that was, the con that was why he did it. I don't see another case where a Magic Pro acts and behaves the way that Paulo does in this video. Or with Marcellius, who's made, quote, the same mistake multiple times. I don't think he changes. Why would you change? What you've been doing, cheating, has made you who you are. It's really hard to give up winning, as Alex later found out, because he got banned. For life. He got banned two free times. Three different times he had to get banned from this game. Hi, guys.